I shouldn't, I shouldn't have to live like this. I should know what happened to my child. A mother at Grand Rapids is desperate to know more about her son's death in prison. An autopsy report says that he died from an accidental overdose, but she wonders where the drugs came from. Fox 17's Lauren Edwards has been looking into this case, and she joins us now live with what she's discovered. Lauren. Janice Max, you know, I met the mom over a month ago at Commissioner Womack's radio station. And since then, you know, we've been talking phone calls, emails, text messages, trying to piece together exactly what happened on the morning of December 9th. And she says, you know what, the autopsy re report may say one thing, but she believes there's more to the story. There was nothing wrong with my child. It's a belief Joanne Johnson stands by. We're just a family that needs to find out what happened. It, you know, you. A 35-year-old, don't be all right today, and then, you know, fall dead within less than 24 hours. The Grand Rapids mother says the last time she spoke to her son, Ventron Vanique Lott, on December 8, 2021, he sounded okay on the phone. He was fine. He was just telling me that I needed to call because they wasn't giving his medicine. The end of the call was joking. She says Lot suffered from seizures and has had them since he was a child. So he asked her to call the Macomb Correctional Facility to make sure he got his medicine. He stated that I needed to call there because they was messing with this medicine. They was not giving him his medicine. However, Johnson never got a chance to make that phone call. Before I could call the day before I got the phone call, my son died in his sleep. The morning of December 9th, 2021, Lot was found unresponsive in his cell. He was pronounced dead less than an hour after guards were called in. Johnson has called and written letters to officials trying to figure out what happened, but claims no one has responded. When she went to pick up his belongings in February, she says this is what she got. Well, these are the boxes papers. of papers. Seven and a half years. Blank notebooks with pages oh. ripped out. This is his book. Lot's eyeglasses and stuffed in a case, she says this. It's white powder and a plastic bag with some black, I don't know, it's, in, it's still in there. I put it back where it was. Johnson believes it's illicit drugs. She claims other inmates told her Lot was given those drugs by prison staff. I was told that my son was given fentanyl. An autopsy report later confirms Lot died of, quote, an accidental overdose. It reads, quote, cause of death combined effects of cocaine, heroin, and fentanyl with associate acute pneumonia. Lot reportedly had 8.1 nanograms per milliliter of fentanyl in his blood. Cocaine was triple that, along with trihexafenadyl, which is used to treat tremors. How did he get the fentanyl? I don't know. He's in prison. Johnson says Lot was serving his second stint in prison, 8 to 30 years for attempted armed robbery and attempted carjacking. But she says that shouldn't matter. She wants to know what led up to his death and how drugs got into the prison. Fox 17 took her questions to the Michigan Department of Corrections. How is it that narcotics makes its way into a jail or, or into a correctional facility? Um, you know, there's really only a few ways uh, that that can come in, obviously, um, and that's certainly been uh, hampered uh, because of COVID, because uh, obviously when, when visitors come in, that, that's certainly one way in which uh, drugs can be introduced. Chris Scouts with MDOC says drugs can get in three ways, over the fence, through the mail, or through the gate. That's staff or visitors uh, coming through the gate, uh, bringing it in, uh, people throwing it, literally throwing it over the fence, uh, using drones or some other procedure. We've even seen potato guns. Gout says whenever a prisoner dies, Michigan State Police immediately investigates. In the case of a prisoner lot, um, this was something that occurred uh, back on December 9th, um, shortly before 7 a.m. Uh, his cellmate approached uh, our custody staff to let him to let our staff know that uh, the prisoner lot needed assistance. According to the police report, which Fox 17 obtained through a Freedom of Information Act request, guards performed CPR and administered Narcan, but Lot was later pronounced dead in McLaren McComb Hospital. The report also notes MDOC officers found a plastic bag containing pills in Lot's left sock. It's not clear if that was on his person or in the cell or if this was the same baggie that Johnson found in Lott's possessions. We asked MDOC about Johnson's claims that it was the prison staff that supplied Lott with drugs. Scouts could only speak generally. Unfortunately, that does happen. So certainly whenever that happens, we root it out and we make sure that it, there are some, and we certainly advocate for swift and severe uh, punishments uh, because that not only puts 
uh, our staff at risk, but it also puts the other prisoners at risk. Johnson now Alone? working to find a lawyer and get answers about her son's death. My son went in there with a target on his back, and they did just what they said they was going to do. He's at home in a box on my shelf. Now, remember, Michigan State Police, they investigate all deaths that happen in any prison in the state. And when I reached out to them this morning to get an update on this case, they say it's still open and ongoing. And we're going to continue to give you guys updates as we get them from police, from family, from whomever, because we are going to stay on this case. And in the 6 o'clock show, we're going to take a closer look at federal data about overdoses behind bars. Reporting live here in studio, Lauren Edwards, Fox 17 News.